Hey, we're going to create a bit of a funky hero banner that you could use on your homepage or wherever you want, just to kind of remind you about some things about layouts and instant entrance animations, maybe, or scrolling effects and things like that. So we're going to do that right now. It's not going to take long at all. By the way, I'm Imran Sadiq, Web Squadron. Make sure you like, subscribe, share and follow. Now we're in media library at the moment and I've already dropped in some assets. So I've dropped in a logo that we're going to use over here. I've dropped in some images. This is via Canva, which you can use for free. I have the pro premium version, but you can use for free. So if you go into Canva and you type frames, it gives you like the layout for the iPad, you know, MacBook or laptop and iPhones as well. And then you can create some images and then drop the images in and they literally go into the frame. I'm going to split this up into three separate images. And I've also added in a background image. It's like a soft, like pinky, salmon-y, slight off-white pinky color there that I'm going to use as a background for the hero banner. Now, before we do anything else, I am going to split this image up into three. What I've got is this image. I've got it three times and I'm going to go into the first one. I'm going to edit it and I'm now going to crop it. So I only have one item at a time. So I'm just going to literally go like that and I'm just going to crop it. And I'm going to do that to the other two as well. So there you go. Got the iPad, got the laptop and I've got the Apple iPhone as well or whatever phone you want to call it. You will notice these are PNG. I always recommend you use bulkresizephotos.com to convert them into a WebP. But this is just an example we're doing here at the moment. Normally, these would have been WebP and the size of this probably would have been about 20 uh, kilobytes rather than 300. Right. Let's now create our page. Let's go to all pages. And I'm going to go to add new. I'm going to call it think like that. And we're going to click edit with Elementor. OK, now, if you have got a header and footer, it's OK to show that. But I'm actually for the purposes of this tutorial, just going to go down here to the bottom left and click settings. I'm going to set the page layout to be canvas and I'm also going to click hide title. OK, that just hides the title. I don't need to see that. OK, and I don't care about any header footer. Normally, you would probably show that because we're just going to create a fake one here right now. I'm going to go to the plus sign and I'm now going to insert a section that's actually going to be just one column, mainly because we are going to add in some extra items into here. But I'm going to be using some absolute positioning to do some posi positioning on here. It's very common for you to create a section with two columns, but I'm actually going to use just one column like that. Now, bear in mind, I could have hit the gray folder and I could have used a template. So I could have gone over here and said, OK, let's go to the hero and maybe start with one of these templates. Just insert this and then rearrange it. But we're creating one completely from scratch. So we've got our section, one column. Let's go into the settings of that. I'm going to set this to be a boxed. I'm also going to set the width of this to be uh, 1000. Um, in fact, I'm not going to go 1000. I'm going to go with uh, 900, mainly because of the size of the MacBook Air screen I'm currently using now. On a bigger screen, you could have got away with 1100, 200, 1300 as well. But for the tutorial, we're just going to go with 900. I am going to have no gap for the column. I like to be in control of the margin and paddings. And sometimes I don't like it that Elemental kind of already gives you like a bit of a like a margin or a padding already within there. The same with columns gaps as well. But don't worry about that yet. Now for the height, I'm going to set this at the moment to be a VH of um, 50. So this is currently no, we're not going to go with 50. We're going to go with uh, 75. So this will now fit 75% of your screen. So as I add items in, it will start to slowly fill up that 75%. If I put 100, it would have been full screen 50, 50%. Depending on the amount of items we in here, we might need to adjust that, but we'll address that later on. OK, so the column position we're going to leave as a mid. No, in fact, we're going to set this to be as a top. So that now means every time I add in any items, they're going to go right to the top. If I had set it to the bottom, you can see here now any items would go straight to the bottom. I'm just going to set this to be to the top for now. We will probably come back and adjust this later on. OK, right. Um, now what I'm going to do is uh, go to the style. and I'm going to give this a background. We could give it a gradient color. You know, we could start to mess around with gradients and, you know, you could give it like a hard gradient if you want. You can even angle it as well. Mess around with how you want. Or we could give it a solid color like that as well. Instead, what we're going to do, and I'm just going to clear those all out. 
we're going to put in an image. And I already picked an image that I created in Canva over here. This is a WebP image. It's 1920 by 1080, but it's only seven kilobytes. This is why I must stress the importance of using a WebP image, right? 1920 by 1080, seven kilobytes. When that came out of Canva, that was close to a megabyte. It's crazy how small it is shrunken to. Let's insert that as the background. I'm gonna set the position to be uh, center center. It will be a scroll, which means it doesn't kind of move. Uh, what do I mean by that? It's not like a parallax, parallax effect where the image moves as you scroll up and down. We're gonna leave it fixed. By the way, if you pick fixed, it, that is where you do get the parallax effect. So the scroll is actually now stuck to the page. Let's go to repeat and have no repeat. And the size, I'm gonna go for a cover like that. Now, as soon as I do that, you will have noticed these patterns appear over here because that is actually what is in the image. If I'd gone for something like a contain or whatever, you start to get a bit of like empty space either above or to the sides of it. Cover is my favorite one there. Now, what I'm gonna do is add in a logo, um, a menu as well. And then I'm going to start to add in other items. But what I'm going to do is be really, really like um, pernickety with how I do it in that I'm going to do everything with just one column. It's so easy for us to use like a logo and a, um, uh, a menu. And we usually have two columns maybe, but you can do all of this in just one single column. OK, so I'm going to go here now, go to images and I'm going to pop in our logo. We're just popping an image. Don't care how big it is at the moment. Let's pick our logo, which is over here. And this logo actually has a lot of estate over here, excess space. So let me just edit the image. Let me just uh, crop it and let me crop that out. So this is where if you get an image and it's not perfectly perfect in um, its sizing, don't worry about it. I always say it's better to do your scaling and your cropping in the media library, mainly because if you then afterwards realize, oh, this isn't what I want. I've now made a mistake. When you come over to this image and you go to edit, you have the option to restore the original image. But if you go and do this um, outside in, say, um, Photoshop or something else, when you insert it, you've already cropped it. And then you might lose that facility to crop again. So bear that in mind. Always set your image size to be full. I cannot stress this enough. This is your resolution. Yes, this affects your size as well, but if you go and pick anything except pull, you are affecting the quality and the sharpness of that image. Always go for full. We are gonna modify it later, don't worry. Now that's our logo. We're gonna go with think like that. I'm gonna go with percent over here and I'm now gonna adjust the size to be something like that. So I've gone for 93 and I'm gonna set the max width to 93 as well. If you don't set your max width, there's always a chance that when you're viewing this on a really big screen or a really small one, it starts to adjust more than you actually wanted it to. And that can ruin things a little bit. Now, at the moment, this section um, does not have any marginal padding and it has no gap. And you can see that logo is right to the top of the, the top border. Don't worry yet. Get your pieces in and then think about your margins and your padding. I know a lot of people that do your margins and your padding first. I go about things a little bit differently. I say, get your content in and then you will know how much breathing space do you really need? I and mean, we've already got quite a bit here because this is a 900 um, pixel width, boxed width. Right, now we're gonna drop in a nav menu. So I'm gonna go with menu like that. I'm gonna drop in the nav menu here. So let's just drop that in there. Right, there's our nav menu. I'm going to leave it as that one because it's a fake menu. I'm not overly fussed about it. I'm going to say the alignment is to the right. Now, I'm also going to get rid of the underline pointer. I don't like that. We'll have a bit of a highlight color. Let me just show you what the underline was. It's where you get this effect. Can you see that underline there? I, I'm not a fan of that. So let's just get rid of that and have none. When it comes to setting this up for your mobile, I will come back and revisit this, okay, right at the end for how it looks on the mobile. But right now, we're just gonna kind of um, work on the, um, the desktop version for now. Right, so we've got our item in here. 
Um, I will, though, just very quickly modify the color here for the hover. So what I'm going to do is just go over and hit the hamburger here, and I'm going to go to site settings. And I'm just going to change my global color. I, I can do that. It's not a problem for me, mainly because this is just a test website. I'm not fussed whatever changes on here. It's a test website. Let's just update that. Because I'm going to have, even though this is a pink salmon-y color in the background, the strong um, uh, highlighting color or the bold color that really sticks out is going to be a uh, like a, it's, it's red, but it's, it's not a, a full-on bold red, okay? Back to the nav menu, back to the style, and for the hover color, I'm just going to pick that there, and I'm just going to have it like that. So when you hover over it, you get this red color come through. I'm just going to set the style of this also. The I'm going to leave this as a Roboto just for the purposes of what we're doing here because it's just a test website. I always use REM for font. The images, margin and padding, I like to use pixels. For font wording, I always go with REM. It is so much better in terms of responsiveness to go for REM rather than pixel or VW or EM. Trust me, always go for EM. Because if I set this as a 1, that is now 16 pixels. If I set it as a 2, that is now 32 pixels, right? 1 REM is 16 pixels. So if I was to go down here and just leave this as a, in fact, I'm going to go with a 0 0.9. I'm going to make this be a very delicate, small kind of menu. So it's not, it's not a full on. So 0 0.9, you know, it's going to be like, what, 16 minus 1.6, you know, 14.4. Uh, right? So that's what we're going for at the moment. I'm also going to make the weight of this be a little bit more shallower uh, or thinner even, and we'll go with something like that. So this is just a thin font at the moment. Now, can you see here, we've got Think on one line and we've got the navigation menu on another. This is so easy to get into one line. If you go to the logo and go to advanced, a lot of people pick inline. I don't go for inline. I go for custom, right? And I'm also going to do the same now for the logo, uh, the nav menu, going to go to advanced, and I'm going to set this to also be custom. They are now in line with one another. Now, we do have a bit of a, uh, uh, not a problem, but the way it's currently um, set up is that that logo is not perfectly in the middle with the navigation menu, as you can clearly see there. What I don't want to do, though, is go over here and set the vertical alignment to be a uh, middle like that. Because if I do that, as I add more and more items in, it is going to start to mess around with the layout that we have here. So I'm going to leave this at the moment to just be top at the moment. OK, we will come back to adjust that. But let me just go back to what we've done here. We've made both, both of them custom width. That's put them in line. But the trouble is now is that if I go and add in, right, let me show you a headline like this, that headline goes directly underneath. That is totally fine. But if I was to suddenly make this headline also be a custom width, okay, and let me just shrink the words here. Let's get rid of that and just have add your. Can you see what's happened? It's now put it in line with the other ones because it's a custom width. So this is where we have to think a little bit. I actually want the items here to be totally um, split up. Right, so I want it to be the opposite ends of the screen, you know, so I want the logo on the left and I want the menu on the right. I also want this item to be on a completely different line. So here's what I'm going to do. First thing I'm going to do is go over here to advanced. And I'm actually going to take this off because I don't want it to be there. It will be on its own line anyway, so that it doesn't need to be a custom whip. I just wanted to show you how it works. Over here, though, on this column, I have the option for, and remember, you're in the column. I have the option for the horizontal line to be default, which is kind of start. I could go with center, or I could go with space between, or I could go with space around, right? Or even space evenly. You can clearly see that space between is the one I want. So what I now have is that, I mean, everything is in one column right now, but I've split them apart like that, by just using horizontal align. Now you can see the logo here. It's not perfectly in line with the menu. So I'm now just going to give this a little bit of a top margin, something like, and I'm going to use my little drawing device over here that you can use with a Mac just to get, that's fine, just to get that in line. Okay. 
So that is now in line with the logo, uh, with the items that we have over there. Again, please don't worry about the size of the screen because I'm just using a MacBook. Now, I'm going to add in some wording now, okay, where we're going to have like a, a little bit of a paragraph at the top. And then we're going to have a bigger headline in the middle. And then we're going to add in some like uh, some further info, like a call to action button. But also we're going to add in some moving images as well. Okay, stay with me on this. So let's just go over to this header here. Okay, and I'm going to make this header be a H2. Okay, because this is not the main header. The main header, which will be bigger, will be our H1. So this is just going to stay as a H2, and I'm going to add in a title. So I've got dynamic solutions for consultants. I'm going to add in an animated headline like that. Let's just drop it in over here. Rather than having it highlighted, I'm going to go for rotating, and I'm actually going to go for the clip version like that. So what happens is it types it, or it kind of adds it, and then it switches over to another word. Now, in the settings for this, we have before, the text that will rotate and what is the after text. Let's add some in. So I've set this up to be high converting. The rotation will be websites, blogs, marketing uh, services, and then it ends with data track clients. It's an infinite loop. It changes every two and a half seconds. It will be aligned to the left. And I'm now just going to change the style as well. So the text color will be black. The animated text will be obviously the red. You know how we're linking it all in now to how I'm going to be thinking with the color scheme. Now I'm just going to change the typography. Well, I'll do the typography in a moment. So I've got a, uh, a header two and I've got a header one. The header two has got to be a lot smaller than the header one, right? So let's just go back over here. I'm going to go to the style now and I'm going to change the typography. Again, leave it on Roboto, REM. Now we did 0 0.9 for the one above. I'm going to go for a one like that. So now we are slightly bigger than what we had before. That was the 0 0.9, okay? We're going to go for a one like that, and I'm going to go with a 500 like that. So it's not too bold, but it is bolder than the um, the menu, okay? Now I'm going to go, uh, now I'm just going to also do the uh, the main header as well. Typography for that, leave it as a bot. So I'm going to go for a one now. Sorry, not a one. I'm going to go for a two. Now, is that too impactful enough or should I go for a three? The three feels way too big and the two feels too small, but the 2.5 kind of works for me quite well there. So I've high converting blogs that attract clients. And this is obviously going to be changing as you move along. So you get a bit of movement there. That could um, annoy people, I have to be honest. Not everyone's going to like that. But if you want a little bit of like movement on your page, it can work really well. So if I go over here, and I go to the advanced now and I go to custom, the width, and I set this to be custom. It is still going the full 100%, but I could leave this on percentage now and I could start to do this and you can see what's happening now. So if I go with something like 50%, right, it's now kind of creating going from two lines to three. So let's increase that to be uh, 60. That kind of works okay, I think, from what it's doing. Please bear in mind, though, you might want to modify it a little bit more if you so want, but that's working OK now. Now, what I will do, though, is go back into here to the style and I'm just going to change the typography a little bit with the line height. If I set this to be a one. But look, let me just show you. If you go in and you start to drag this, the, the words clump up together. So I'm just going to increase that a little bit and have something like that. OK. That's great. That's looking good so far. You will notice, though, between the logo, header two and header one, there is 20 pixel difference between each item. And that's because your column gap always defaults to be 20. I would prefer it if they were all set to zero and you start to modify them yourself. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. I've set them to 20, uh, zero. I'm going to go over here now to the header, uh, the second header, the subheader, and I'm going to go to uh, advanced. And I'm now just going to set the top margin to be something like um, 100. So I'm basically pulling it away from the logo above, okay? So just to give a bit of breathing space, I'm actually okay with the amount of space we have here. There's zero pixel difference, even though there is a little bit of line height there. But when you look at it, I think that works quite well in terms of you got your subheader there. You know, you're kind of telling them a bit about 
who this is for, but then I'm trying to give a bit more of a headline, like what is the problem we're trying to solve here? Attract clients, high converting. Hopefully that's going to speak to someone over there. Now below here, I'm going to now add in a divider line. So we go with divider and I'm just going to drop in a line here. Now you don't need to do a divider line. You could, if you want, just kind of put a, um, a bottom border onto this. So if I go here, and I go to advanced and I go to border, I could have said, give me a solid border, but only give it to me on the bottom. So it would look like that. The reason why I'm not doing that though is because I want a little bit more um, control over what I'm doing with it. And I want to adjust the size of this. So I click on this divider line, like so, and it's going to be a solid line, or I could chop and change it and go for like different patterns as well. Uh, like a dotted line even or something like that. Okay, I'm actually okay with the solid line like that. I'm going to uh, make the width of it though be some, so we know this is 60%. We know that the, the header one is 60%. But I'm going to drop it to be about uh, 40. In fact, we'll go less than 40. We'll go for something like Something like that, 38%, okay? So it now looks quite nice in how it uh, basically looks. You could add in some text as well into the middle of that line. You could even add in an icon. I'm going to leave it with just like that. I'm going to go to the style. You could increase the weight if you want to make it a bigger line. I'm quite okay with one, and I am going to make it, though, be a bit of a gray color there. So, in fact, we'll go with that gray color there, right? So there is a line but it's not in your face kind of line, okay? Uh, and you can also adjust the gap as well. And I'm just going to decrease that gap like that at the moment. Okay, cool. So we have a divider line, which currently looks like that. We're going to drop in a text editor and the text editor is going to go there. That should be below the divider line. If you have a, if you have a problem rearranging things, go down here to navigator and you can see text editor, and I'm just going to drop that now below the divider line like that. I am going to go back to the divider line, and I've just had a bit of a change of mind about the uh, the gap. Let me just put the gap back in. No, we're going to leave that. I'll mess around with it later. Right. So this um, uh, text box that we're going to add in here is actually going to contain a number, and then underneath it there will be some text. So I'm going to type into here a number, something like uh, 37. And then I'm going to hit return. And underneath that, I'm going to type a uh, website, um, websites created, something like that. Okay. But I'm, I'm, but I do want to change the size of this. So I'm going to go to 37. I'm going to make this be a header three. So it's a bigger number. I'm going to go to the websites created bit at the bottom and I'm going to leave that. I could even make it a header six. Or I could just leave it as a paragraph or pre-formatted or whatever I want to do there. So I've got a number literally like that by just changing um, what it was. I've just changed it to a header three. If you go to text editor, you will now see that that's what it's doing there. Let's go back to visual. I am going to now go to my typography. I'm going to leave that as the, the standard black color. Make sure it's left aligned. I'm going to go over, in fact, I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to pop this on a separate line. So 37 websites created. I'm going to go to typography. I'm going to set this to be an REM of one as well. Leave it as a one. I'm going to set this to be a 400. And I'm going to go to the line height and I'm going to adjust this to be 0.5. Can you see how that is only affecting the text, not the number above? Because it's because they're separate entities, even though they're in text editor. So you got your header, because I assigned the number as a header, and I got my wording, but the line spacing is only affecting that. So I have quite a bit of control there. And now when I look at it again, I now think I can get away with about 0 0.9 like that for the, uh, for the uh, description below as well. So 37 websites created. Bear in mind that you could make it center as well, but I think at the moment it works quite nicely in that style. Now I will go to advanced and I am going to give this about 30. In fact, I think 30 is too much. We'll go with 20. So I'm going to give it about 20 pixels difference from the top there. Okay, so we got a divider line and it's now just separated out from the line above. This item here, okay. We're going to go to advanced and we're going to go to custom and make this a custom width. 
Literally like that. Remember, we are using one column, one section, one column, and we're doing all of this in one column. Eventually, when you use Flexbox containers and stuff like that, the mindset starts to kick in with how you do your layouts. You don't have to have inner sections and loads of columns and stuff like that. Let's now just duplicate this, right? And let me duplicate again. At the moment, they are all spaced out. We're going to bring them all in together in a moment. Let's just go over here now. Markets like that. This is all made up, by the way. These aren't my numbers. I'm just putting in example things here for you. So at the minute, we've got these three boxes or text editors, but they're all spaced out. And that's because if we go over here to this column, can you see that we have space between? So everything in there right now is going to be spaced out all the way. So the obvious problem here is how do we get around that? Because I want the logo and the nav menu to be split out, right? So if I was to go over here now and I go, oh, start, because I want to bring them all close together. Well, look what's just happened to the bits above. It's now messed that up. But here's how you get around it. This is so quite freaky. If I go to the very last one in that line for those three text editors and, I, and it's on custom already, if I now increase the width of the last one, watch what happens. It starts to move everything else inwards in this like weird kind of funky, serious way. I mean, I, could, I would probably say rather than using percentage, I would say use pixel because um, even though this is kind of controlled, um, I would say go for pixel because you have, you have more authority and control basically over its layout. So I'm now just going to do something like something like that. So look, this is all one section, one column, and we have this layout with a bit of custom width, right? And we haven't even used absolute positioning or anything yet. Now, I did say that this entire section was going to be a 75. I've now changed my mind and I'm going to go for 90. Now, I do below here just want to add in another section for now that I'm going to make be a full width. I'm going to make it no gap. I'm going to make the height of this be a VH of 100. And I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a dark color, something like that, just because I need to have something at the bottom there. I'm now going to add in some images and we will add in some scrolling effects. Let's go over here and we are now going to drop in a image. Okay. I, there we go. Just drop the image in there. And uh, oops, sorry, it's gone. I put it in the wrong place. Let me just go over here. Let me just move this. I'm going to drop the image to be at the end. So I've rearranged the image in the navigator to just sit after the uh, the free text editors. Isn't this cool though? Just pause for a moment. How you can make your text editor look quite funky. And I didn't even have to mess around with any HTML styling and all anything like that. You could be really specific with styles and all of that with your text how you want. But I've just gone for pretty simple at the moment. Right, this image here, we're now going to pick our, let's go for the, uh, let's go for the tablet. Let's go for the tablet, okay? So there I go, I've added in the image. I'm going to set this to be a full. Don't worry about how blurry it is, just because of when I was creating it in Canva. And I'm going to set the alignment for this to just be a center at the moment. Okay, so we have our one image. I'm also going to go to the size of it and I'm going to set the pixel size of this to be about uh, 100. 150, 150. No, I think 100 works okay. We're going to go, no, we're going to go 125. <laughs> there we go. We're going to go 125. So I've got my image in there, 125. I'm also going to go to advanced and I'm going to uh, set the width of this just to be a custom width. Now I'm going to duplicate this image and I'm going to duplicate it again. The second one, I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick the laptop. And for the third image, I'm going to go in and pick the mobile phone, which is that one there. Now you will adjust your sizing. OK, so this mobile phone does not have to be that big. So if I was to drop this to be, say, 60, that's kind of looking a little bit better. I mean, I will say, though, these images are now looking small. So let's just pop this up to be 150. Let's make the mobile be about 80. Let me just delete the max width for now. And let me just increase that to be so, something like that. I think that works there. Let's go with 430. 
Okay, so we've got a 430 styling there. So you can see what's going on now. Now at the moment, these items, I'm gonna have them on a slant, like a diagonal slant. And as you scroll up and down, they are gonna move a little bit. Um, some will move up. Well, they're basically all gonna move up, but they'll move at a different rate. Now I'm gonna go over here to the iPad image, okay? I'm gonna go to advanced, scroll down until you get to transform, and I'm going to rotate this. And I'm gonna rotate it to be about minus, uh, we're gonna go about minus 25 like that. It's not a full on minus 35 if that makes sense, 45. I don't want it to be at a total like proper diagonal. It's diagonal but not overly too much. In fact, I'm just gonna drop this down to be about 20. Oh, so far so good. But I want them to actually be kind of in line with each other. Now I'm gonna go to the tablet first. I'm gonna stay on the advanced tab and at the minute the custom is width, uh, custom width at the moment. You'll notice down here you have position. I'm gonna pick up, uh, click position and I'm gonna go for absolute. The reason I'm going for absolute is because this will be custom positioning for that section. It is not going to be for the entire website. If you go for fixed, it will fix that for the entire website. So it will always be there on your page which is fine if you want to have social sharing icons stuck to the side of your pages. But right now, we're just going to go for something that works for this section. So I'm going to go with absolute. Now, as soon as I do that, it does move all the way up here. I can now pick it up and rearrange it. I'm just going to do the same over here to this one. Make this one be absolute and then move it and then do the same here as well. Just move it a bit. And we'll have the mobile somewhere like that. Now, you could measure this out to get it so much more scientific in how you're doing it, but we've got a bit of this light movement going on there. I'm now going to go over to my um, tablet, go to advanced, go to motion effects, and we have scrolling effects, right? And we are now going to have a vertical scroll. Not horizontal, not rotate, we're just going to have a vertical scroll. So this is going to move up, and I'm going to set the rate of this to be a 2. And this is basically going to be moving up as you go up and down the screen. So look, you can see it. Now, the trouble is with this that it is going off at a slant, but I don't mind that. I don't mind the slanting effect. I'm going to go here as well. The laptop, I've now made be a three. And the mobile, I'm actually going to make that also have a scrolling effect and a vertical. And it's this time, this is going to be a four. So the tablet is a two. The laptop is a three and the, uh, the mobile is a four. Bear in mind though that um, by having this set to zero for the viewport, it kicks in as soon as your that um, element is at the bottom of the screen. It's already kind of nearly halfway, but it means that from the bottom to the top, the motion effect continues. If I do something like this, that tab mobile will move and then stop moving. It, the effect will stop, but I want the effect to carry on going until you get to the top. Just shifted their layout ever so slightly like that. And now look, as you scroll up and down, you're gonna to start to see this movement and you will notice that the laptop moves a bit more than the tablet and the mobile goes a little bit more like that. So it just keeps moving as you're scrolling up and down the page. Now, if you had further content on this page though, um, you could make it a lot more dramatic. So let me show you what I mean. You could have it so it's kind of like down here and maybe the laptop is like there. So it's kind of, it's a bit more spaced out now, okay? So you can, the items are there. And if I was to now just change these values here, so let me just go to transform, uh, not transform, sorry, motion effect. I switched it to one, but let me make this be a two. Let me make this one be a three and make it be a four on the other side, like that. And let me make the mobile now be a four. I've already said this in the video and you're probably thinking, hold on, why is it switched? It's because I was just messing around with it a little bit there. Let me just make sure I do the right one, motion effects, and switch that to be a four and update that. So imagine you've got loads of content on your page and then they're coming out of view and they're moving. It gives you just a bit more life on your page as you're moving up and down. I don't know what you think, but I think that, that just adds a little bit more of a life effect. And you could have social sharing icons, that fade in as you scroll up and down the page. Now that's all good and well, but how does that look when you get to the mobile view? This is really important. One section, one column, yay! But on the mobile, it ain't gonna look so good. Let me just show you. 
right? Let's just put this onto uh, 378 like that. It is not going to look amazingly brilliant. Let me just double check whether that you could all see this properly. I've just realized my face was probably hiding a lot of things as, as I was rearranging. Um, but if you go back to the mobile, uh, 378 like that, can you see now the layout just is not looking as good? And look, if you look at the mobile menu, it's gone all doolally. Let's sort some of those issues out really, really quickly. But firstly, for the nav menu, make sure your content is on full width. I like to go for center like that. So like that, you would stylize the typography, okay? I wanna focus on the content, but you would stylize the typography, you know, your colors. In fact, let's just do that really quickly, the toggle button, uh, the background, uh, we will make uh, completely transparent anyway, like that. Um, in fact, I need to go back here, don't I? Uh, no, I don't, no, back to the mobile. Okay, so you can now start to adjust like how close is the logo to the border or the edges. Just click on it and you could um, maybe on the column, I would say it's not a bad idea to set your margin to zero. And I would say give this some padding. I would go for like 10, 15, 10, 15, something like that. So we get a bit of breathing space. We've got the wording here. You've just now got to mess around with what you're doing, right? So look, we had zero there. I think zero is too big. We'll go with 15. Let's now switch this. Look at the custom width. It's 100. Let's just set the percentage here to be 100%. Okay. And then you're going to go in and modify your typography. So let's now go with a uh, two. I think two. I think, yeah, uh, two, two kind of works. The only issue I have, though, it is pushing things down a little bit. But then again, that's kind of where you have to think about your content and what you're going to show there. So I think 1.6. 1.6 works well. Let's go with the, and the line height is still working as well. Now here, like you have your divider line. Remember that. Are you going to keep the divider line there? Are you going to have a bit more spacing from the top? Let's just adjust a bit here. So let's just add in about uh, 20 from the top there. Remember we had these, um, uh, the custom whips here. Let's just add some custom width here of about, uh, let's go with, uh, let's go with about 75. Let's do the same here with a pixel of uh, 75. And over here, we're going to set this one now also to be a pixel width. But I'm just going to do something like uh, something like that. Go about 149. So we have a bit of a layout. Now, this is where you might want to think now about the sizing that you've got in these text editors. So at the moment, it was 0 0.8. Do you want to keep it? Do you want to modify it? Uh, do what you want. Now. Remember, the next thing we had were the images. If we just go down to image one, image two, if I pick up image one, I can now get it there. Image two is, let's just put it there. And then we get image three, which I can't even see. It's off the scale. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Now, if you can't see the image, don't worry about that, okay? Just go over here and um, uh, just just mess around with the offsetting until you see it appear on the screen. In fact, I would say pop it to be zero and zero. There it is. It's now appeared on the screen for us there because we are going to be messing around with these items as well. So let's just move. <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit messy, isn't it, when you have lots of them, but let's just go with our tablet. Okay, I'm going to go to the style. Remember, you have different sizes for your... Um, for your desktop, your tablet, and your mobile. For the mobile, though, I'm going to set this one to be about uh, 80, something like that. And I'm just going to arrange it to be, uh, I might even go with something like that. In fact, we'll go with there. I'm then going to get the uh, laptop, and I'm going to make that be about uh, 200, like that. And we will move that to be uh, over here like that. And then we're going to get the mobile and we're going to style that. And I think we'll go with about 70. 70 is way too big. We'll go with 50 like that. And we'll just move it to be like that, like that. There's something like that. Okay. So if we now just update that, and view how does that look when we do like the preview bit. So like there you've got your menu. Obviously, you would color it and style it accordingly, however you're going to have it, right? But we now have this effect going on here. Now, the scrolling effect, you know, you, you could argue maybe it's a bit more going way to the left. So just adjust it accordingly. Just pick your images up and just rearrange them to be how you're going to have them. 
Um, so I'll go with something that's maybe a bit more like uh, something like that. In fact, I might stagger them a little bit more. So we get a bit more of a staggered effect going on. So let's just check how that looks. And as you scroll up and down, you get the movement of the items going over the wording there, but I'm not fussed about it. That's the whole effect we're going for, okay? And they do cross into section two, but it kind of ties it all in together. Now, if we go back to our desktop, the desktop is still fine. Look, the desktop is still as nature intended, right? Remember, this is all one section, one column, right? Custom width. And so there's loads of stuff you can do to reduce the amount of code and whatever's being written in the background and keep it all really light and clean. <laughs> so don't be afraid to experiment and play around. I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow, and I'll see you. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the back.